Hello, I'm Anika from Made to Sew. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you how to do a corded buttonhole. Now, I really like a corded buttonhole. I feel it gives a really professional and premium finish to a buttonhole. It also adds a little bit of extra strength, which is great at allowing a buttonhole to sort of last through time and last through wear. Now, there are a number of different ways of doing a buttonhole. We've got automatic, we've got manual, but I'm going to be showing you how to do a corded buttonhole on two different machines. So we're going to look at manual buttonholes on both the Benina and a Husqvarna Emerald, and automatic buttonholes with cord on both the Benina and the Husqvarna Emerald. Finally, looking at a keyhole buttonhole on the Benina with cord. So all of the buttonholes I share in this video are going to show the addition of cording, but I'm just sort of breaking it up to show a variety of different machines and slightly different methods. I'm going to put in the description box below the timings for when I'm doing each of the different machines so that you can skip on to the part that is relevant for you. We're also going to be looking at the kind of cord that you can use in your buttonholes and also how to finish them, how to tidy them up so that they look good on completion. Let's start by looking at an example of a corded buttonhole. Now this is a standard buttonhole on my machine with the addition of some cord. I have not amended any of the settings, the width or the length of any of the stitches. Now this cord will obviously be removed and I will show you how we tidy this away during this tutorial. What are the benefits to having a corded buttonhole? Well, a corded buttonhole can make your buttonholes look better. As I said, this is a standard buttonhole here and it does look really quite nice. The addition of the cord is going to sort of raise the beads or the stitches in the buttonhole. It will make them look a little bit more textured and more pronounced and potentially sort of fill them in a little bit more as well. As well as making it look nicer by adding cord to your buttonholes, you're also going to make the buttonhole stronger and help to prevent it from stretching out. I'm sure you've all had garments where the buttonholes are just gaping and they just don't look very professional. That can be down to the fabric itself, especially if you're working with a loosely woven fabric, something like a Chanel or a boucle fabric, or if you're working with buttonholes that are quite large, you can also find that they'll stretch out and gape over time. If you add some cording to your buttonholes, it will help to prevent this. And the addition of cording is not just for woven fabrics. You can also use this same technique on knitted fabrics or stretch or jersey fabrics. You will again find that the addition of cord will stabilise the fabric and help to prevent it from stretching out and having gaping buttonholes. There are a variety of different things that you can use for the cord in your buttonhole. You don't necessarily need to go out and buy something new. I'm sure you will have something at home that you can use. And the majority of the time, you're going to be looking for something stable that's going to fill that buttonhole. So a couple of examples include a buttonhole twist, a gimp, a crochet cotton, a pearl cotton or a pearl rayon, or basically an embroidery floss. You can use a top stitching thread. You can even use the same thread that you're using for the buttonhole but numerous layers of that. And I will show you how to actually join that together to make your own filler for the cord of the buttonhole. And I'll do that in a separate video. I'll pop a link to it here. Now, what I have used in this buttonhole here is this, and this is a top stitching thread by Guterman. It's just in the industrial sizes. And I tend to often use this because it is pretty thick and it is great to add as a sort of lightweight filler for the cord. It comes in a variety of different colours, so you can colour match it perfectly. The key is that you are going to want to colour match your cord, ideally, to the thread that you're using for your buttonhole. Again, you can test this. As long as the cord is hidden, then it's fine to use. Another alternative to these stable threads is that you can also use an elastic thread. That is great to use on a knitted or stretch fabric if you want the support in the buttonhole and the stability, but you also need the buttonhole to stretch. As always, I would recommend testing. Test, test, test until you're happy with your choice of filler and the size, shape, style of buttonhole that you're working with on the fabric that you're using. Now, when you're doing a corded buttonhole, you ideally want to have the loop side of the cord to be where the button is going to be sitting in your buttonhole. So say, for example, this was the center front of my jacket here. 
the button is going to be sitting closer to this edge. This is where the pull or the strain is going to take place. Therefore, I'm going to, if possible, have the loop end of my cording there, just to add a little bit of extra strength. Now this is the automatic buttonhole foot for my Benina, and I'm gonna show you how to position the cord so that it's clearer when you get to the machine. Now, cut yourself a length of cord. I recommend that it is the length of the presser foot plus a little bit extra, so say a couple of inches, five centimeters, and that's my thread doubled. Now, I folded my thread in half, or my cord in half, should I say, and I've got a little loop. Now the loop is going on the back of this presser foot. There is a sort of central triangle piece and you need to sort of lasso that and the cord is going to sit over that. Now the two bits of cord are going to come towards the front and they don't want to be twisted here and they're going to be sitting underneath the presser foot. Now at the front you've got sort of another central point and then two sort of grooves either side of that. So the thread on the right is going to go to the right hand side of that central point and over the right hand side of that sort of groove and it will stay in place once you've locked it in there. So the left hand one is going to the left hand side of that central point and then sort of over again and there is little grooves for that thread to come out of. If I turn that over you can see it's sort of two tram lines of thread an even distance apart. Now you know what we're aiming for with the cord, I'm gonna pop on my automatic foot and I'm going to choose my stitch, which is number 10 for a standard buttonhole on my Benina. I want this thread to be below my buttonhole, so I'm gonna turn my hand wheel and then I'm going to collect my threads underneath, just like so. Now I have got my fabric ready and for this example I am using a stabiliser behind it. If you've watched my introduction to buttonhole video and I would recommend that you watch that as well, that talks about the size of the buttonhole, what size you need to make and about interfacing your fabric. I would always recommend that you interface your fabric where there is going to be a buttonhole. You may also need to use stabiliser but for this tutorial I'm just using a stabiliser. I've marked my buttonhole with the start and end as well. Now I'm going to take my cord and position it on to the buttonhole like I showed you. In the groove at the front, to the back, over the little hook at the back, back towards the front and then in the groove. Just like so. And once it's in the grooves, you can, you can leave it. It will stay in position and you don't need to be holding on to it. Now you're gonna line your buttonhole up as normal. And if you haven't watched my video for automatic buttonholes, I would recommend that you watch that because I'm not gonna be covering that in great detail here. Now, the good thing is that when you've got everything lined up, the cord should show, if you've drawn your central marking, whether everything is straight. Now, mine is, and I'm ready to sew. As you sew this, you don't want to be holding onto the cord. It should be held in place by the grooves at the front. And your stitching should be going over the cord, it shouldn't be stitching through it. Just guide the fabric through the machine as normal. Because I'm doing the first one of the automatic buttonholes on this machine, when I get to my end points, I need to press the reverse button to inform the machine that it needs to change. Obviously, once I have done my first buttonhole, the machine will then remember how long the buttonholes need to be and do them all the same length for me. Once your buttonhole is done, you can either take it out of the machine, remember that your cord will be attached to the back of this automatic buttonhole. So you kind of need to pull that off, there we go. And there you have your buttonhole. If you prefer, you can also sew over your buttonholes again, depending on the look that you're going for and it also depends on your sewing machine. Now this is the automatic buttonhole foot for my Husqvarna and they're pretty common for a lot of sewing machines. The size of the button sits in the back here. If you want to know how to do an automatic buttonhole with this, I recommend watching my automatic buttonhole video. I'm just gonna be covering the cord in this one. Now you're gonna fold this piece of cord in half so that you have a loop at one end. Now this loop goes over, there's a tiny little sort of rod that sticks out the back of this presser foot. Now if I turn this over, you should see that the cord is going to travel along the bottom of the foot. 
approximately five millimeters, a quarter of an inch apart. Now at the front of the foot here, there are two little grooves. The right hand piece of cord is going to go in the right hand groove, the left hand one in the left hand groove. And make sure both pieces of cord sort of travel evenly under. There's some little feet here. Make sure that they're, the right hand one is sitting in the right hand feet, the left hand one is sitting in the left hand groove. Now I've attached the automatic buttonhole foot to my sewing machine and I've set my sewing machine up for doing an automatic buttonhole, including pulling down this little thing here. Now, if you're unsure about how to do this, please do watch my automatic buttonhole video. Now you're going to guide it into the little slot on the left there, take the thread underneath the foot and then up and over the little groove on the back, back towards the front and in the right hand slot. Once you're happy, take your fabric and line everything up, just like you normally would when you're completing a automatic buttonhole. Now, once you're sewing the buttonhole, you should not need to hold onto the cord. You should just be able to let it go and stitch. The sewing will be sewing either side of the cord, not through it. When you finish sewing, raise the presser foot and you may struggle a little bit here to get the cording or the buttonhole out. Take the cording out at the front and then remember that you've got that loop around the back of your buttonhole. So allow that to come off the back and then you should be able to slide that out. And that is your buttonhole on this machine with cording. I'm gonna show you how to tidy this all up in a second and how to finish the cording. Now this is the manual buttonhole foot for my Benino, it's foot three. And again, I've got sort of a central sort of point at the front of the foot. And this foot has also got grooves where the buttonhole is going to stitch to allow the beads or the stitches of the satin stitch to feed through, to stay parallel, to stay nice and neat. So with the cord on this, again, cut yourself a length of cord, fold it in half. That loop is going to start at the front. It's going to be lassoed over that front piece. Then the cord wants to sit in those sort of tram lines underneath. And it's going to be what, approximately five millimeters, just under a quarter of an inch, I would say, apart. And that is how you're going to want to position it on the machine. You should not need to sort of hold the cord at the back. Uh, you might need to just sort of guide it, but you shouldn't need to hold it once it's in position. And you definitely don't want to be pulling it. I've replaced the foot with foot three. This is my manual buttonhole foot. And I will again choose my stitch, stitch 10 for my standard buttonhole. Now I'm going to grab my piece of cord and I'm going to fold this in half. Take the loop of the cord and that is going to go over this little sort of groove at the center front. And then both threads are going to come towards the back making sure that they're sitting in the grooves for the buttonhole. Now you're going to want to take your piece of fabric and position that under as well. And then you're going to want to lower the foot to line everything up. Make sure that the needle is going in where it should be. Now you're going to stitch as normal. And again, you should find that the cord is sort of brought forward by the foot. Everything stays parallel once it's nicely lined up. And all you need to do is guide everything through. You don't need to hold the cord or pull the cord or anything. And there you have your manual buttonhole with cord. Now this is the manual buttonhole foot that came with the Husqvarna. You may have something similar. You're going to again fold your cord in half and the loop is gonna go along this piece on the back. Then both pieces of cord are going to travel towards the front. Now, if we turn this over, they should be traveling in the grooves. So you should have two little grooves there on the bottom of the feet, the presser foot. Now the cord should sit in those grooves because that's where the stitches are going to take place for sewing the beads of the buttonhole. And the distance of the cord is approximately sort of five millimeters, a quarter of an inch apart. Now I've positioned the manual buttonhole onto my machine and I am set up to do a buttonhole on my machine. If you want to know about how to do a manual buttonhole, please watch my manual buttonhole video. Now the cord is going to go over the little groove on the back of this foot 
and then you're going to aim for the cords to be sitting in the grooves underneath the foot. They should be about five millimeters apart and you might need to get in really close and have a look here. Now it should be clearer when you put the foot down and they should then stay in position. Now line everything up like you normally would. So find the center and position the needle into the fabric. And then you can begin sewing. You should be able to leave the cording alone. You should not need to hold onto it as you do this. Just guide everything through the machine as normal. And remember when you reach the end of your buttonhole to push the reverse button. And there you go. There is your manual buttonhole with cord. Now, once you've completed your corded buttonhole, using the foot that you wanted to use on your machine, automatic, manual, four step, whatever it is that you have, you then need to finish it off nice and neatly. The first thing you're going to want to do is to pull on the cords from the one end and you want to pull back so that you can have the circular piece of cord finishing neatly in the one end. Now, what we're going to need to do is we're going to tidy these threads away to the back that's my personal preference because it really means that they're nice and secure. I have seen some people sort of pull back on the buttonhole here, cut the threads and let the cord sort of bounce back inside. Personally, I would rather sort of tidy them on the back because then I know that they're nice and secure to support my buttonhole. Now, I'm also going to do the same for these threads as well. So we're going to grab a needle, thread the sewing threads through a needle and then take them through to the wrong side of your garment. On the wrong side of the garment, you can tie the sewing threads off. So tie them neatly together. And then depending on what it is you're making, you can either trim off close to the knot or you can thread the two threads back through the needle and then thread this back up the wrong side of your buttonhole or into your fabric just to really secure it and make sure that everything is nice and neat. Once you've threaded those back up, you can cut them off. Once you've secured the sewing threads, then it's time to sort out your cording. You're going to want to choose a large eyed needle, and I would recommend giving that a fresh cut and threading both cords through the needle. Thread the cords through to the wrong side of the fabric and make sure that from the front, the buttonhole is looking really nice and tidy. On the wrong side, you can then knot the cords. So you're either going to need to secure them with a knot or with some stitches. Um, it depends on the fabric and what it is you're making. I also choose to normally bury my cords as well into the fabric at the back of my garment or into the back of the buttonhole, depending on again, what it is I'm working with. So I would sort of knot it or sew over them and then hide them away. So there you have it, that is your corded buttonhole. You would now need to cut this open, and again, I cover a couple of methods for doing that in my introduction video. Just to show you, it is possible to do a keyhole buttonhole, which is what I'm doing now, with the addition of cord as well. It's just slightly trickier when it comes to tidying the cord away. I'll show you in a second. Feel free to stitch over your buttonholes twice if you prefer that look, or amend the stitch width or length to work with the fabric and design of the button that you're working with. And there is a keyhole buttonhole with cord. It's slightly trickier because you can't really pull the cord back through the buttonhole to finish it off because you'll probably have stitched over the cord at this point here. Instead, you will need to tidy both sides, the front two long ends and also the curved sort of loop end of the buttonhole away, as I showed you with the standard buttonhole. So thread them through to the wrong side of the garment, knot them or secure them somehow, and then hide them in your stitches. But that's what I would do if I wanted to cord a keyhole buttonhole. Thanks for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video and that you now feel confident doing corded buttonholes.